Hey guys, Nick Smith here, and today I'm going to show you the way that I like to sharpen my images. Now, I always save this step for last because it's really important to have all your edits done first before you decide that you want to do your sharpening because it kind of just enhances all the edits that you've already made. So the first step to this is we're going to make a stamp visible layer. And now the uh, keyboard shortcut for this is Control Alt Shift E or Command Option Shift E if you're on Mac. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring up a copy of everything you've done. So it brings up the background copy along with all your edits, which I threw into this folder just for convenience. And then it brings up the layer of everything merged into one visible thing. So from here, what you want to do is you want to desaturate it. And you do that with Control Alt U. And then just take the saturation slider and just drag it all the way down. Or another option, if you don't want to do that, uh, you can, I think it's Control Shift U and it just desaturates it automatically. That's actually what I meant to say originally. So Control Shift U to just desaturate it from the beginning. And then what you do from here is you go up to Filter and then you're going to go to Other and then you're going to go to High Pass. And now what this does is it's going to make all the details stand out for the image. Now we can't really see anything right now because it's just a solid gray. And that's because it's, it's such a fine amount of details that are showing. We're not able to see it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up to like 10 just so we can get a view of what's actually going on here. And now we're going to go ahead and zoom in on the eye. And this is the important part because this is where I always check to see where my sharpening is going to be is on the eyes because that's what I think matters most is whether or not the eyes look good. So now if at one, we can see there's uh, still some detail. Now I usually, what I do is I look for sharpness in the eyelashes. So when I can start to see the eyelashes, I think that's pretty good. So let me go check the other eye over here. And this eye is actually a little sharper. It looks like uh, I seem to have missed focus slightly and gotten that a little sharper. So I'm actually going to dial it back down because Typically, you want to adjust your sharpening for whatever is the sharpest eye in focus. So about 0.7, I think, looks good. So we're going to hit OK here. And now this is not going to do much. If you back out, you're going to see this is still basically just flat gray. So now we're going to change our blending mode. And there are a few options for what we can do uh, for our blending mode. So what I want to do real quick is I'm going to make some duplicate copies here just so we can actually take a look at this uh, and compare. So I'm going to turn off these layers and then we're going to go to this one and we're going to set this to overlay. And now overlay is typically uh, not as harsh uh, as in sharpening as some of the other options. So if we just toggle it on and off, you can see it brings a little detail. So Let's go look over here at the uh, eyebrows over here because it apparently hit focus about here and that plane was a little closer than this eye. So we're going to go ahead and look at the details in the eyebrows and the eyelashes here if we just toggle this overlay layer on. So as you notice, it's definitely bringing in a little more detail to the fine hairs. And if you look, it gets a little sharper there. And now that is one option. So we're going to go to our history tab here and we're going to make a new snapshot. And we're going to name this Overlay High Pass. All right, so that's our first option. Now, the second one, if we turn this on, our second option is going to be Vivid Light. And now, Vivid Light is a little bit sharper than Overlay. Uh, I think it adds a bit more punch to things. It tends to add more contrast and just uh, is a little more punchy than overlay. So we'll toggle that on and off and you'll see it, it does look a little sharper. Uh, so that, that is a good option. And it, typically what this depends on on what you want to use is going to be what looks best for your image because you should also take a note to, of what your noise is looking like because this sharpens the entire image so you want to like see how it's affecting the noise. So if you look here, it definitely does make it more prominent, but I don't mind grain uh, in a lot of my images. It, it looks kind of filmy, so I, I typically don't care. Sometimes I even add grain, so uh, it doesn't matter. So if we look at this other eye, which is not our sharpest eye, that also gets a lot more detail brought out. And see how much more rich the blacks get and see how much like nicer the uh, lights are as well. So if you just kind of look at that, it just adds a little more contrast to things. So that's with vivid light. Now, if we turn on this next layer, 
the uh, third and last option is going to be linear light. And linear light it takes it even another step further. It is extremely sharp, uh, almost to a too critical of a point. Because if you look, it just it starts to get a little uh, nasty looking. Like it's almost, I don't know, halo-y and kind of like too sharp and too much whites and it's too contrasty. And uh, typically I will not use linear light unless it really needs sharpening. Uh, now, another option is you could mask it off the eyebrows here because it's it seems to be having the most trouble trouble with the eyebrows. But if you look at the actual like eye and stuff like that, it, we are getting the most detail brought into the eyes using linear light. So what we could do for that is just bring up a mask by hitting Alt and then clicking on that right there in the adjustments panel. And that's an inverted mask. And then we could just kind of paint over where we do want the sharpening. So let's go ahead and hit B and bring up the brush tool. And then we will swap our color from black to white. And then just paint in right on the iris here. And on the eyelashes. And the iris over the eyelashes again. And as you'll see, now we're just affecting that. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to do this method in a little bit here. So I'm going to actually go ahead and undo that though. Go back to where it was. Uh, did I make a copy for the... No, I did not. Okay. I did not make a copy for our last method, which is the vivid light. So I'm going to go ahead and take that and you know, do that one more time. Do that. And now let's make a snapshot of vivid light. Okay. And then we're making that snapshot. Okay. So now we're going to turn that layer off. Then we're going to turn back on the linear light layer. And then we're going to go make a snapshot of that. Okay, and now we're going to compare these and see which one we like best. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up all the way to our top where we have our snapshots. And let me go ahead and make one more uh, without anything, just because this will actually set it back to what it, it was imported with with no edits done at all. So we're going to go ahead and make a new snapshot and put this no sharpening. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this and see what uh, each option did. So let's look at no sharpening real quick. And I think about 200% would be good to view this at. So let's just pay attention to the eyes and the eyebrow. So this is no sharpening. This is with overlay high pass. And if you look at it, it did definitely clear up. And let's go back to oh, no sharpening. And we'll go vivid light. Let's go back to no sharpening again. And then let's do linear light. And as you notice, like it just it continues to ramp up as we go through these. So let's go through each at a time now instead of just bouncing back and forth. So if we go no sharpening, high pa or overlay, vivid light, linear light. Now vivid light is probably my usual favorite. That is the one I like to use the most. So I'm gonna stick with that to show you the next step. So we're gonna go ahead and delete. Uh, oops, excellent to leave the one I wanted. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and delete these other ones real quick and uh, Still deleted it. I don't know why it keeps doing that Anyways, so we're gonna go back to this and now what we want to do is we're gonna toggle this on and off And actually let's look at some more of what this does because it doesn't just affect the eyes If we take a look at the lips here, you'll notice there is a ton of detail that's brought into the lips So this is with it off and you'll notice it's kind of hazy. It looks a little like decontrast and then if we turn it on It just gets much sharper in the lips here. And if we look at the skin texture over here It also increases the detail in the skin texture and just makes everything a little more prominent and makes so you can see things better So what we want to do now is we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this sharpening layer and we're gonna hit control J for that and now the reason this differs from uh, increasing your radius during the high pass stage is it is a little more controllable because if we want to just have fine details it'll be a little more fine and then it'll just continue to enhance those fine details where if you just up your radius in the high pass stage it'll just make it really thick around the details and it doesn't actually just continue to make that fine adjustment to sharpening so what we want to do now is actually I think I like the way this is looking with two uh, on the skin but I want to reduce it just a little bit so I'm going to put that down to like 50% and what we're going to do now is we're going to make another duplicate of this so we're going to go ahead and hit control J again 
and then we're going to make a mask by holding down alt and clicking the mask down here in our adjustments panel and then we're going to hit b for our brush tool and then we're going to take white like we did earlier and then we're just going to paint it on the areas we want very sharp so i'm going to paint it over that and i'm going to go ahead and paint it on the lips again because i, I really like to have detail in the lips of my subjects so if we turn this on and off with just this extra so let's let's go ahead and make a group out of this actually so we're gonna hold down shift while we're on the top and then select there and then we're gonna hit Control g and now we're gonna double click that's uh, blending modes so we're gonna double click on the name here and we're gonna name it sharpening so now let's toggle this on and off real quick and you'll see just the, the huge difference it makes to everything overall if we look at even the hair here it really like sharpens up the hair and if we look down here on like this part of the fabric here it sharpens up the fabric the lines in the fabric and then of course if we go back and look at our noise again that's a little too zoomed in it kind of just sharpens that up and makes it a little more of a pronounced grain but i shot this at a pretty low iso so it doesn't really have too much of an effect on that so let's go ahead and zoom in here let's look really carefully at our eyes and i'm seeing a little too much sharpening on the eyebrows it's it's a little too much for me so what i want to do is I want to go ahead and go back here and I'm going to make another mask but I'm not going to hold down alt while I click this mask I'm just going to click it regular which will bring up a white mask so then when I paint black on it it will hide what I want it to hide so I'm going to go ahead and hit B bring up my brush tool then hit X to swap from white to black and then paint over where I don't want it as sharp and that's just because I think it's a little distracting with how specular it was and I think I might actually just kind of completely forget about sharpening on the eyebrows just because i i'm finding it oh well, that's a little too much i'm finding it a little distracting so what i want to do now is i want to change my brush opacity so i'm just going to hit five on my keyboard and if you hit shift five it'll change your flow if you hold down shift will you hit any number and then if you don't hold down shift and you just hit the numbers it will adjust your opacity so that is a really useful shortcut if you don't know about that so i'm just going to go ahead and go over this once with 50 percent so let me go that so i'm just showing my mask real quick so there it's still sharpening a little bit but not a ton so let's go ahead and back out just a little here and toggle our sharpening and you can see what it did as a whole so that's before and that's after if you look it does add a little bit of contrast to it as well which isn't really a bad thing uh contrast in images is very important if you ask me uh, if you don't have enough contrast it can look a little too flat and lifeless so Let's go ahead and zoom in some more. I don't really like it that far. Let's do something more like 150. And just pay attention to the lips, the skin details, and the eyes. That's before, that's after. There's before and after. And that is how I like to sharpen my images because it's really neat and controlled. It's not very difficult to get a grasp of how to do it. And you can just continue to sharpen things you want sharper or make things unsharp or whatever you want to do as you saw i adjusted it on the eyebrow because i thought it was too much and i made the lips sharper and now say you want to just really go overboard with this just for uh fun uh let's do this we'll just hit Control j on this one that's supposed to sharpen up the eyes and lips and we'll just do this a bunch uh now say you really wanted it to look extremely sharp from a distance you could do that with these all these copies so let's go ahead and group that uh, we'll toggle that on and off just so you can see the difference that that alone would make. So just look at how much detail you can do. If you really want to over sharpen your images and you want to go for that look, like it's so possible through this and it's just really controlled. I find it's the best method without uh, tending to uh, make a too much artifacts or add too much noise to things and because it's it's so selectable. Uh, if you just do like a normal sharpening you'd find up in this filter and then sharpen area, it, you're not going to get the same kind of results. So that's it for today's video. If you learned something, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you aren't already. Feel free to share this on Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, any social media you see fit. As long as my work is being shared and people are learning, I'm happy. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.